last year, which we still have a ton of earth science damage to do. I like earth science. We have a we have like life science 4-1 through 4-6. So that's six different standards, but they all tie together. And then we go into our earth science. But I do I did listen to a webinar this summer and got all this that box full of free stuff back there, which has to do with fossils. So when we get into fossils and stuff, I'm gonna use a lot of stuff out. I'm gonna use that lesson too. And I actually have fossils and all the fossils that I have are from or found in the state of Oklahoma. So that's gonna be kind of cool. Are cow bones? No, they're not cow bones. <laughs> they're fossils from long ago. I sat through like a six hour webinar. But it was worth it to get all that stuff because they sent me like, that's how come I have so many boxes of like colored pencils and so many boxes of rulers. And there's like magnifying glasses in there where you can where you can like look closer at your fossils. And I'm pretty sure I have enough fossils that everybody in the class will have a set. So you don't have to share. I'm pretty sure they sent me enough to do that with, which would be, you know, I'm not saying somebody in the other class might not use them too, but you won't have to share with in your class. There should be enough for everybody to have their own set, which is nice. Because some of you's gonna really look at them and stuff, and then others of you aren't, and that way, if you have your own set, if you want to take longer to look at them, you know what I mean. Okay. All that being said, technically today's notes should not. Guys. You won't see it anyway. And I gave y'all most of my passwords to most things, most of my electronic devices. <laughs> I gave I even gave my password out to my cell phone to you eighth grade students. Okay, so the two videos we have here, they pretty much draw it out or write it Today's out. This video is sort of a continuation of our last one. Mm. This one's a little louder than the second one. Are you recording? Yes. I've been recording this whole time. What's going on YouTube? <laughs> Turn it all the way down. No, I went too low. <laughs> I'm not having a good day today, am I? I just don't want it to blare into the other classroom. I'm trying to keep that from happening. Alulus, and what the differences are between dominant and recessive, homozygous and heterozygous, and also genotype and phenotype. Now, all of these terms are related to genes. And remember, a gene is just a segment of DNA and you should, you should already have that control. in your notes that a gene is a segment of DNA, yeah, but if you want to write it down again, you can. If you want to draw out the chart develop. that he's drawn out, you may do that too. Sometimes these traits are determined by a single gene, like the ones that code for fur color in mice and red green color blindness in humans. More often, though, our characteristics are determined by several different genes, 
They have to interact with each other. All right, so you need to know example, that um, the, our characteristics is determined by several genes that interact with each other, okay? So our characteristics are determined by several different genes that interact with each other. So genes that code for height, which is one of the reasons why we're all different sizes. If we look back at the definition of a gene, you will notice that it codes for a particular type of protein. The reason I say type of protein is that there are often multiple forms of the same protein. Okay, so we have talked about how important protein is to our body and our cells and stuff, and we know there's a bunch of different types of proteins, but there's also different forms, and that's why he's talking about here, multiple forms. So you need to know that there are multiple forms of the same type of protein, okay? There's just a few, like, changes here or there on it. Does that make sense? Anybody have any questions on that? Do you understand what I'm saying? So, I guess you could compare it kind of like to Captain Crunch cereal. Like, there's Captain Crunch cereal, then there's the berry Captain Crunch, and then they come out with the Halloween cat. It's all Captain Crunch, but it's just a little bit different variations of it. That's basically this. It's all the same protein at that moment, but there's different variations of it. So not only do we have a bunch of different types of proteins, we also have variations of each type of protein. Okay? Any questions on that? And so there'll be a different genetic code for each of those forms. Uh, and you need to know there's a different genetic code different for each of those different forms. Alleles. So you and can those call, alleles. forms are called alle He calls them alleos, but I don't know why he calls them alleos. I don't know where he gets that O in there. I just we just usually call them alleys. Or well, that's what I call them. As different versions of the same gene. And that and alleys are different versions of the same gene. Or alleos as he calls them. Because we have two copies of every gene, one from each of our parents, it means that we'll have two alleles of each gene. And these could both be the same allele, or they could be two different alleles. If they were the same, we'd say they were homozygous. Alright, so you need to know that you, you will have two alleles of the same gene. They can be the same, or they can be different. Okay? Or they could be the same, both of them could be the same, or they could be different. And this is where we get into our dominant and recessive genes and alleles.
If they were the same, we'd say they were homozygous for that allele. All right, homozygous means they're the same. And if you can't, I'll spell it out for you because I know it's written pretty small up there. H-O-M-O-Z-Y-G-O-U-S. And that means that both of your alleles, alle alleles are the same, okay? Whereas if they were different, it would be heterozygous. And the heterozygous means they're different, okay? And then we'll write some more down about those two words in a little bit on a different video. This brings a bit of a problem though. Say we had a mouse that was heterozygous for fur color, with one allele coding for purple fur and the other for green fur. What color would our mouse be? Well, it's not going to be a mix of the two. Instead, one of the alleles will be dominant and the other one will be recessive. And it's always a dominant one that gets expressed. And we know the difference between dominant and recessive. We've covered that in here. You just need to know that on the heterio, that one is dominant and one is recessive. Okay? So. So if one is dominant and one is recessive on the hetero, then what do you think they are on the homeo one? Same. But do you think they're dominant or recessive? Recessive. They can be both. Oh. And they'll show you that in a little bit. They'll either they'll either both be dominant or they'll both be recessive. Oh. Okay. So if the purple allele was dominant to the green allele, which would make that green allele recessive then our heterozygous mouse would be purple. This means that the only way to have a green mouse is if both of its alleles were for green fur, which we would call homozygous recessive. On the other hand, the purple allele will always be expressed when it's present, regardless of whether the mouse is heterozygous or homozygous for the purple allele. Now, the last two terms that we need to cover are genotype, and phenotype. The genotype is basically the entire collection of alleles that we have. All right, so your genotype is the whole collection of your alleles that we have. Okay, so that's the collection of the proteins, right? Because they said the alleles were proteins. So you just need to know that genotype is talking about the actual genes or proteins themselves. So we think of the three mice that we used before, the heterozygous mouse, the homozygous dominant, and the homozygous recessive one, we would say that they all have different genotypes because they have different alleles and so different genetic codes. However, your phenotype is the characteristics that you get from your genotype. All right, so the phenotype is the characteristics that you get. And what they're talking about with characteristics would be like um, your red hair or your brown hair or your uh, attached earlobe or not your attached earlobe. The characteristics is what we visually see. Now, there is some... Um, uh, that's inside our body that we don't see, and it talks about that a little bit, but for the most point, it's the characteristics. So, so the, the genotype gives on the, uh, is the actual gene, and the phenotype, if you can look at it as what you look like, is, is what makes you you, okay? And what you can visually see the majority of the time.
Any questions on that? So as both the heterozygous mouse and the homozygous dominant mouse are purple, we would say that they have the same phenotype, even though they had different genotypes. So you can have the same phenotype even though you have different genotypes as your, like your sibling. Wait, so you can have the same phenotype. Right. But have different genotypes. Different genotypes. Right. It's on the screen. If you look up there on the oh, on the oh, see it yep. often. I think you're having a hard time seeing her on coat and Michaela's having a hard time seeing her on coat. Alright, is that good? Alright, is everybody ready? Yes. Meanwhile, because our homozygous recessive mouse is green rather than purple, it has a different phenotype as well as a different genotype. Anyway, that's it for this video. In our next one, we're going to take a look at genetic diagrams. So cheers for watching, and we'll see you soon. Cheers for watching. So the next thing is why do we sometimes look different than our genes? Um, every year we had examples of students that are like, hey, you know, both my parents have a certain color eyes and I have different color eyes, but my parents have curly hair and I have straight hair, and how did that happen and this and that. We're getting closer to that answer, but first we gotta talk genotype versus phenotype. Um, this these is two things review. work together to give us um, basically our individual characteristics. So All right, so genotype and phenotype is, work together to give us our individual characteristics. The genotype being the gene end of it, and the phenotype being the actual appearance or what it acts your characteristics of it. But they have to work together. You have to have both. Huh? You said genotype and phenotype work together what? To give you your individual characteristics. To make you you. But they have to work together. You have to have both. One can't do without the other. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Couldn't see out of my glasses. Oh. Everybody got this? Yes, yes, sir. The information that is on your genes. Keeping in mind that it means type of gene, we're going to go back to our picture of our chromosomes with our little gene here, and we know that there is a gene for hair type, like whether it's curly, which is one type of allele that we can have, or we could have another type of allele that will give us straight hair. So if we have two different alleles, that means that we can have three different combinations. We can have two curlies a curly and a straight, or a straight and a straight. Now, if curly is dominant and straight is recessive, then we have two dominant, dominant recessive, recessive, recessive. This is what's on our genes. What combination of alleles do we have on our genes? Now, the genotype <coughs> that determines our phenotype, our physical appearance. So, um, and you can put that physical appearance, appearance under your genotype if you can, you know, 
characteristics slash physical appearance, if that helps you do the two, make the difference between the two. Um, due to what trait is actually expressed? If you have two curly alleles, you obviously have curly hair. If you have two straight alleles, you obviously have straight hair. Uh, the curly is represent the straight, so you have curly hair. So we only have two phenotypes in this situation. We have curly and we have straight hair. This is what the trait actually looks like on the person. Um, it doesn't always have to be a physical appearance thing. Um, it could be something to do with how something inside of your body works, how your blood cells work. Um, there's a lot of options, but basically it's what trait you actually have, which most of the time is the same in your genes, but sometimes it's not, which is actually a really good thing. So <coughs> let's look at uh, some new vocab. On top of genotype and phenotype, um, we have three genotypes, and these three genotypes give us or dominant and recessive genes that have that nice, pretty picture. Um, All right, so genotypes. you have three different types of genotypes, and it equals two different types of phenotypes. <coughs> so I'm just going to list those out for us. Remember, if you will, homo means what? What does homo yes, mean? That's right. Homo means same. same. Good job. You remember, and hetero means? Different. That's right. Hetero means different. So we're going to go back to using the homo and hetero thing, but we're going to add a different word at the end, which will make more sense in a couple weeks. I'll bring it all around when we talk about reproduction. So homozygous dominant. Um, for that, we have homo, which means same, and dominant. So we're going to have big H and big H. All right. So homo, homo genus dominant means you're going to have two dominant genes, right? And she's using H to represent your gene. You can use different letters, but she's using H more than likely because she's talking about hair. Okay. A lot of times on the Putnam squares, they just pick the letter, the first letter of whatever they're talking about, like brown and blue eyes. Or well, they have spelled them out, but you can use just the first letter. All right, so everybody got this part? And you need to make sure that you put dominant underneath there. Two the homologous will always have. Alleles. The next word is heterozygous. And sometimes one. you'll see dominant next to it, sometimes you will not. Um, it's all in how somebody wants to write that. Hetero means different, so we're gonna have two different. All right, so on the on the heter on the heterogeneous, and she's got dominant written underneath there. The reason she has dominant written in there underneath there because heterogeneous we know that has one dominant and one recessive. So therefore, the dominant trait will always be the one that you get. You know, if it's red hair, if you have, you're going to get red hair, right? If red's dominant. But I can see how that can confuse you. Because when you think of dominant, you're thinking of two main, two, so it's up to you whether you put that dominant part on that particular word or not. Now you have to have it on the homos because you need, because they're both dominant. Does that make sense? And that's the reason some people use the word dominant underneath it and some people don't because it gets, sometimes it confuses people when they put that in there. And finally, we have homozygous recessive, which again, we see same recessive. So we have little h, little h, two of the same recessive allele. All right, so you have homotus dominant heterogyset, which is uh, one of each, and then you have homotype recessive. And you need to make sure you put recessive underneath there so you know that that means you're gonna have two recessive genes and this will all make more sense when we get into the Putnam squares these are the names of the genotypes i know they look like really long words but if you keep in mind that homo means same hetero means different and you know dominant versus recessive they're really not that bad now if our 
phenotypes, right? Remember these uh, letters represent a trait. So big H, big H will give us curly hair. We have two of the same thing. The big H, little H situation, big H covers up little H because curly is a stronger dominant trait. Then we're gonna have curly hair. And if we have little h, little h, then we're going to have straight hair. So if you are homozygous dominant for a trait, you have the dominant trait. If you're homozygous recessive, you have a recessive trait. And heterozygous, you always have the dominant trait. Now, who figured this all out? Why does it matter? Answer the question in a minute. Question two. Was that too much information? That's it for today. Mm. You might hit the kill button or stop button up there. All right, so tomorrow we'll watch a little video.